Okay, we're going to go ahead and get ready to receive the word from Pastor Carolyn E. Perry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's author. Yes. Okay, you know you're in trouble when your parents say your whole name. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she said Carolyn E. Perry. Because <laughs> she was looking at me at the screen that way, but you're not in trouble. Nothing but love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. For the Amen. Love. Amen. For the love. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I um, want to start off with just a little story I want to tell you. And this is really directed to the men in our covenant. I wish Apostle was here, but I just want to give you guys a little chuckle this morning. You know, uh, it's still June. And, you know, this is the month of Father's Day, the month that we celebrate you guys. So this is my gift from you. I'm going to give you a little chuckle that y'all can laugh at me. Okay. But after June, it's no good. Okay. <laughs> All right. My car is a 2004 Taurus. And I've had it since 2012. So it's my, my mode of transportation. Uh, it's my go to church my go to doctors, my go shopping, my go to the, get my meds and go to take my, my daughter back and forth to work. So I'm not sure if someone told me that my transmission was gonna go bad or if I created this monster. 
pastor myself. You're laughing already, Apostle, stop it. <laughs> For a little over a year, my car gradually started making some strange noises. And me believing that it was my transmission, every time I would get in the car, me and my daughter, Leslie, we would lay hands on the car and pray that God keep my transmission working, keep my transmission working and praying for him to bless me with a, 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 you know, a car uh, older than the 2020, low mileage and small, you know, uh, a small SUV. And you know, the word says, pray for what you want me to pray specifically. So, cause he could give me a, a motorcycle or something. But anyway, <laughs> the noise kept getting worse and worse. And so I'm blessed to have neighbors around me that, that put, you know, take care of this old lady. So one of the young men came over and he said, mom, he said, give me the keys. So he took and drove the car around the block. So when he came back, he said, listen, he said, uh, I don't really want you to get hurt. He said, so I'm calling somebody to come over and fix your brakes. So I said, my brakes? He said, yeah, that's what's wrong with your car. That's why you're making that noise, it's your brakes. God answer your prayer, no God. transmission problem. No, I'm just doing <laughs> But that's, no, that's in my message too. <laughs> so there's a lesson and a blessing in everything that we go through. Amen. There's also an old saying that God takes care of fools and babies. And I can't even pretend to be a new babe in Christ. So you know which label I'm on. So of course it wasn't my transmission because I prayed every time I got into my car for my transmission to hold firm. And God was just answering my prayer. The word says that God's promises that if we ask, we will receive. Oh. The lesson was to remind me that our God is faithful. Yes, he is. The blessing was that if I didn't, if I didn't um, continue, if, that I was blessed that my car didn't have a lot of damage to it Amen. because I had rode on that for a year and all I needed was brakes and pads. So our God is so good. So now I just need to take a break because I need to, my throat is dry. <laughs> After this, I let y'all make a fool out of me. Is this admission, in, in, intermission? It's an intermission. All right. Well, during this intermission, we have a special presentation for our man of God. And uh, good to see you, Apostle. So just uh, give me a minute to share the screen. And if you guys can give me the thumbs up that you can see it. All right. Here we go. Oh no, wait, wait, why is it big? All right, give me a minute. Why is it big? Come on. Here we go. Come on, come on. Give me a minute, I try to make a big screen. Yes. There were some men in my life who helped my mother lay me in. I was a wild duck. Apostle Park is the exact portrait of the father I would create for me. Is that on? He's loving. Oh. Yeah, but it's real low. Encouraging. All right, y'all going to have to give me a minute to get this right. Come on. This is Just had it nice and loud and everything. Now I want to act like it don't want to work. Like and I know not. See, he's missing all the wonderful things I said about I, him. I want him to hear over. that. Yeah, I'm trying to even find where it lets me do it over. It's not even letting me get that option down there, right? You know what I mean? To rewind it. That was a lie. 
All right, here we go. I know what to do. You thought you had me? <laughs> he thought he had me. My life was over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the meantime, we want to say happy birthday to our apostle. We happy love birthday. I'm going to ask Tony to give some words while we're waiting for this video because we didn't get a chance to hear from you on the video. So go ahead and unmute Tony if you can and, and say happy birthday to our apostle. You know how to unmute. Where's Tammy at? Tammy, where you at? There you go. Y'all hear me? Got it. Oh, God. Yeah, we got it. Y'all hear me? Got it. Yes. Uh -huh. Happy birthday, Big Bob. Oh. How are you? <laughs> the Godfather, the real dad. <laughs> Seriously, happy birthday, man. And thank you for everything that you give me on a daily basis, man. It's very, very, very much appreciated. Hey, Larry, but I'm going to take him on the court and give him a lesson. Oh, oh no! I'm gonna give him a lesson, Larry. Oh. Put your put, pick your cane back up. All right, and cut it out. all right, all right. Pick your cane up and go back and <laughs> go sit on it. Love you, Devin. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. For real. Thank you. You done woke him up. You done woke yeah. up a sleeping giant. Listen, listen. You, you, you did all right till you said try me on the court. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. He, he beating up young boys, Tony. You don't want to mess with young boys. Miss Betty, if you wouldn't mind too, just saying a few words as well. Thank you so much. Good morning, Apostle and the family of God. Uh, I wish you a happy birthday. As it says, the first verse says, To everything, there is a season. A time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time uh, to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time for mourning and a time for dancing. I ask you, uh, the Lord to bless you on this special day and you added more years and that the work of the Lord will be continued in your life as you go on the field the Lord, establishing churches, taking the word of God with your healing virtues and delivering to God bless you on this special day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right, now for our video presentation. Thank you, Lord. You guys hear it? Yes. My biological father passed when I was nine years old. There were some men in my life who helped my mother rein me in. I was a wild buck. Apostle Park is the exact portrait of the father I would create for me. He's loving, funny, encouraging, and a no-nonsense God. I thank God for you. You are my dad, even though I could be your mom. I love you. Happy birthday to our spiritual father. Happy birthday from the Upshers all the way in Alexandria, VA. We just want to send our love, want to celebrate you, and we salute you. We thank God for the divine connection. Hey, happy birthday, my dad. Much love unto you, man. Uh, may God bless you throughout the day and the days to come. Have fun, enjoy. Hey, man, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So, hey, shock it. Get it on while you still got time. <laughs> we love you. Much love, my brother. Shock it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Apostle. 
just wanted to say happy birthday. Pray that God bless you with many more. That he continues to bless you in the ministry. And hope you don't mind. I got a nickname for you. So people used to call you Iceman. How about I call you Iceman, God's Hype Man. All right, you be blessed. Once again, happy birthday. <laughs> extend on behalf of my wife and I a very wholesome, hearty, blessed, happy birthday to you. We wish you many, many more. We love you and you have a wonderful day. <laughs> Hello, Apostle Parks. Happy birthday. Enjoy. Thank you for being a great apostle, um, a leader. Thank you for being um, a godly man, for showing the love to us, for teaching us, and continue to be a blessing. We appreciate you and love you. Happy birthday. Enjoy. Best I can. Well, Deb, we just want to say happy birthday to you. You are um, an awesome man of God, leader, friend, servant leader. Um, we appreciate you. We are so blessed to have you a part of our lives. And we uh, just want to wish you a happy and blessed and prosperous birthday. Happy birthday, Larry. Happy birthday, the Apostle. What about your puppy? Uh, <laughs> as Doc would say, ditto. But um, appreciate you. We, we love you. Uh, looking forward to spending time with you, uh, just to get away and just enjoy our friendship, enjoy our family. Because we're, we're basically, I, I, I don't even look at us as ministry uh, only. We're family. Uh, so not just family, but friends. So I, I love you, appreciate you. Looking forward to spending some time with you for your birthday. God bless you. God bless you. Got the Sixers team up here now, the Blue Coats. Wow, that's why I'm dipping in and out. I'm just trying to serve these kids, man, and the kids are happy and they they having a the ball in there. So I told them I had to, I had to dip out, but hey, doing what we do. Appreciate y'all. Happy birthday, love you, love you Dad. Have a blessed day. See you later. Crab day today. I'm just yeah. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to put them out. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Oh, I mean, oh, you. Yeah. Uh, happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, intermission is now over. We're going to turn it back over to our featured presentation. Uh, Pastor Carolyn Perry. <laughs> you got to go after that. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Flo. <laughs> you know, um, I still, get, I, it's not a surprise anymore, but it's just so awesome and it makes me happy because our covenant is so in sync you know you know and um we have had a couple of in, encouraging messages the last few messages that we've had you know um minister Jeanette 
reminded us to count it all joy on Wednesday night Bible study. And she used James 1. And, and she also had a little testimony with it. You know, um, Thursday, Mama Cordy gave us some encouraging keys we need in, to possess in order to have the benefits that we can get from kingdom living. Amen. So this kind of leads to my message I want to share with you this morning. And I want to give you a comforting reminder of who our Jesus is. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. Thank you for this covenant. Bless and protect our leadership. Thank you for another day for us to grow closer to you through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the Bible, which contains your words, your precepts, and your directions. As I sh share with your people what you have given me to encourage them, let them hear you. Let them feel the peace. Let them get this reminder. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 Okay, now I want you just to listen to this thing I'm going to give you and, and just pretend that I'm witnessing to you. Christ is the sinner's way to the Father and to heaven in his person and God manifests in the flesh, in his atoning sacrifice and as our advocate. He is the truth is fulfilling the prophecies of a savior, believing which sinners come by him, the way. He is the life, by whose life-giving spirit the dead in sin are quickened. Nor can any man draw nigh to God as father who is not quickened by him as the life, and taught by him as the truth, to come by him as the way. By Christ as the way, our prayers go to God and his blessings come to us. This is the way that leads to rest. Now, I know a little bit about the Bible, about the word, and I can decipher kind of what's being said here. But suppose you were a new babe in Christ and someone talks to you about this, or you might be just saying, well, let me try this, Jesus. Would that convince you to take the next step up or to back up? Some of us make witnessing difficult or confusing. You gonna Come teach on. today. Because what I got, the best thing I got out of that was our prayers go to God and his blessings come to us. This is the way that leads to rest. The rest of that stuff was just mumble, 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 mumble. And so thank God that we have the word of God. And that's all we need to witness. And if we share some of our testimonies, that's, well, I can't say that's icing on the cake because the word is complete but it can help bring it home. Now, as I share the scripture with you, I hope it will be a reminder and encourage you as it did for me. Here's the same thing that I read to you earlier, but this is from the Bible. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. John 14 and six. Now, wasn't that a whole lot simpler? <laughs> Come on now. In John 13 and 14, we pull up close to intimate conversations between God and his children, revealed by the exchanges between Jesus and his disciples. Leaning in to their leader and friend, the disciples long to understand more fully who Jesus is, where he is going and what that means for them. It's a yearning many of us feel as we await his promised return. What does all this mean? What are we to do? What do we believe? And with sovereign clarity in John 14, six, 
Jesus answers and delivers. It's likely one of the main, many reasons why the book of John is often one of the best places for new believers to get started with Jesus. Now, what does John 14, 6 mean? Jesus is coming through in this verse with peace and encouragement for people like us who want to go our own way. As sinful mortals, we're naturally in need of direction. We are prone to wander, misbehave, question, fail, and be redeemed. What Jesus offers here is what some might refer to as their center, their anchor, or their North Star. It's the offer to invite light within that is a lamp to our feet. But to the disciples who hadn't yet experienced Jesus's ascension and resurrection, this was likely confusing news. Their leader had not fully revealed the eternity of his saving grace. Their trust in his promises is the picture of faith we want to emulate today. Choosing Jesus the way, believing his words, the truth, and letting him lead us through temporal trials to eternal abundance, the life. Just before we land on John 14, 6, Jesus explains, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. That's John 14 verses one through four. Now what G Jesus is truly speaking to his followers here is that we are to trust and abide in him the way sheep rely on their shepherd to lead them through the gate into heaven. Now, how is God the way and the truth and the life? I like the verse right before John 14 and six where Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? John 14 and five. This could kind of be a prayer that we could pray, you know. And, and following in John 14, 16, we are shown that when our hearts cry out in prayer, Jesus is actually present and making a way. We see Thomas again in John 20, 24 through 29, wrestling with his human tendency to doubt. And we witness the joy that consumes him when he realizes Jesus is God. It says, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, oh, Jesus, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting. Put your finger here. See my hands. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, John 20, 24 through 29. Then Jesus addresses Thomas with a message to believers today. And this is what I want. This is, this is encouragement for us. This is encouragement. It says, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. John 20, 29. That's for us. We are walking, talking believers of Jesus Christ. And we have not actually seen Jesus Christ like his disciples did. But we believe, so we are automatically blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
We have the word of God in our hands through the flesh of Jesus. And in full view of the disciples in his present vessel of divine skin, God spoke, cared, upheld, disciplined, directed, guided, and taught his children as he still does today. Over and over again in John 13 and John 14, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. And guess what, guys? We can count on it. He's making it clear that if you've seen him, you've seen the Father. If you know him, you know the Father. If you follow him, he leads you to life everlasting with God. Now, when we explore commentaries on John 14, 16, it reminds us of the other things Jesus promises, that he is the bread, living water, a light in the darkness, our source vine, and so much more. Today, we have, an access, have access to an abundance of lucidity on what each part of this verse means. But the disciples' firsthand witness of Jesus' teaching here is thrilling because they are in the presence of God, who begins by washing their feet. All of the discourse in John 14 is before the Passover feast when Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. As he walks through them through painful predictions of those who will deny him. He continues with this reassurance. For us two guys, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. John 14, one and two. As Philip questions show us the Father, Jesus emphasizes that this very his very words are the Father, living in him, doing his work through him. He asked the disciples to believe at least on the evidence of the miracles they have seen thus far. Then he promises that in his absence, he will ask the Father to give them another counsel a spirit of truth, and that he will not leave them as orphans, but come for them. He explains, because I live, you also live, John 14, 19. And let me just say the, the, the grace and mercy of our God is that he knew his creation. He knew that if Jesus just up and left, it would be so much craziness and confusion that we would be lost. So in his love for us, he said, I'm going to send you a counselor so that you will never be alone. Amen. <laughs> Is Jesus the only way, truth, and life? When Jesus claimed that he was the only way to God the Father, he was motivated not by arrogance, but by compassion. I offer this singular salvation through grace and mercy, not by my own ability to perfect ourselves apart from him, if we confess that we believe. The only person who cannot experience God's forgiveness is the one who thinks he has no sin. The only person who cannot be saved is that one who feels no need for Jesus or a savior. Jesus does not exclude us. If we reject his offer, we exclude ourselves. And while many world religions claim a spiritual reality, only Christians believe and trust that God, the maker of heaven and earth, made himself flesh to speak to us throughout all generations as we follow him into eternity. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. So what does this verse mean for us today? As believers, 
Welcome to Doubt, Seek, and Pray to Jesus. Uh -oh. John 14 and 6 offers a triple dose of peace. And here's why. Number one, you know the way. The world will tempt you, toss you, drag you through trials, but you have heard from the Father. You have an account of his words, and you know he conquered death. Regardless of who others pray to, you know who hears you and who is preparing a place for you beyond your wildest dreams. Number two, you can find the truth. As the book of John unfolds, we read that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And in this world, the Holy Bible, Jesus promised to return. Whatever he said, he saw through. When the world crashes in on your beliefs, look for what he says in the word. The third thing is your life is abundant. It's no accident that this list of three promises in John 14, 6 ends with life. That is what Jesus shows us, that even death in this world cannot hold him or you from abundant life with the Father forever. When the enemy comes seeking to destroy, we can seek direction from Jesus, abide in his truth, and celebrate the gift of being loved, created, and called by the creator. This also means that if anyone you know doubts that Jesus can save and offer eternal abundant life, you can recommend exploring the stories in the book of John. Jesus was just not talking with friends in John 14, 6. In it, he is truly providing you conviction today that abiding in him and seeking his direction is the only way home to everlasting life. So I just wanted to just encourage you guys that count it all joy when we come against trials and tribulations because they come to make us stronger and closer and believe more in Jesus Christ. We need to turn from the world and grab hold of those keys that Pastor Cordy gave us on Thursday, that encouragement that we've got so much stuff to be encouraged about that we have no reasons to be sad, concerned, and worried. And then with mine, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So just remember that. Remember that I love you guys. And that's all I have for you Amen. today. Amen. 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 Wow. Good work. Thank you. Excellent. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Carolyn, for that word. And I think that's probably why they share that scripture at funeral so much is because that's all that needs to be said. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. What do you, what, it's like period, Selah, what do you right, say? Right. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And he happens to be our Lord and Savior. And so after that, there's not a whole lot more. Now it's up to the person to make a decision. Right. Will you receive him or not? You know? Right. So thank you so much. That makes it so plain. And like you said, we got to make it easy to witness to people. Otherwise, you know, we can throw in a bunch of words and sound spiritual. Yeah. But Jesus, as they say, taught in parables to make it so simple yes. to live the life. So I love how all the messages just tie together to one thing. Let's just do it. Let's just go all out. Amen. Pastor, did you have anything you wanted to add? I love y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> you try not to get too excited. We love you as well. We love you too. Appreciate you. Oh, we love you too. I didn't get to say my um, happy birthday greetings to you, like on the video, because we were together. <laughs> um, but I got to wish you happy birthday in person. <laughs> and I can't believe that we've been, we've been kicking it for 30 years. Woo -wee. And 
I'm just so blessed and grateful to have you as a best friend and you know everything that that comes with you we were co-workers we're co-laborers together Amen. Um, and so thank you so much if you want to send a cash up there it is dollar sign devon park 63 um and be a blessing dollar sign devon park 63 on cash app um but thank you for um i'm not gonna say it was god ordained that we met that night in the happy hour but God bless the mess. <laughs> if he if works in me, mysterious ways. <laughs> he says, come as you are. We came straight from the bar to him. And he, he ordained us, sanctified us, and blessed us. So Amen. that's the testimony right there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What God can do. Amen. 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 That's the supernatural. That's the supernatural. You put the super on the natural. Oh, no, took me right up out of there. <laughs> You know, that's what he did to me. I just, Amen. that's how I know God don't care about all that dumb stuff. Wow. Stop making excuses and come on and let God have his way. All right. Exactly. All right. All right. Exactly. Surrender. Yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and receive our offering and then we'll, we'll receive communion as well. So you all know what to do there um, for the offering. And... Um, Apostle um, Lawrence, if you'll go ahead and lead us through communion. Okay. Did everybody get the chance to give? Praise God. We know the platform. We're just going to keep it moving. But um, once again, I just want to say uh, love you, Dad. Happy birthday. Um, and I'll say send, send a happy birthday out to your twin, to uh, Aaron. I think I, I'll get the chance to see him yes. this weekend. But uh Love you, man. Appreciate you. And Pastor Cordy has really been such a blessing to us yeah. and continue to be a blessing to us. And like everyone, I, th I think others said it as well. Just love your realness, man. Just, you know, you don't play no games, but you keep it real. And that's what we need in, in these last days. We need real leaders who keep it real and, and love for real and not just talk and hype. So uh, be blessed on your birthday. And, and I, I, I believe and I, I, I just Pray that God will give us more birthday celebrations with you. Amen. So Amen. let's go into communion. I, I was just looking at the, um, the scripture, and it says um, in verse in Corinthians, in First Corinthians chapter eleven. Y'all know very familiar passage, but I started at verse 20, uh, 23 and it says, "For I received from the Lord." that I also pass on to you. Stop. Did you receive Jesus? Pastor Carolyn really took her time. So this communion don't really mean nothing if you don't receive. He said, I, I received from the Lord. I'm just trying to pass. We're trying to pass it on to you. So. Wow. I pray that you would pass it on. As we take this communion today, Amen. that you understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yes. That it's not just, you know, uh, uh, some bread and, and some some wine or juice or whatever that we take. Jesus. It's the Lord himself giving us something tangible to remind us yes. of what he's done for us. Yes. That Thank he gave you. his life for us. Thank you, Lord. Yes. That he was a martyr. They, they just, they just kind of beat him unrecognizably, just to prove that you know what, death can't hold me, sin can't stop me. Wherever you might be, the drug house, the alcohol place, wherever, it, it can't stop me. What? I'm spirit. Right. God is spirit, right. and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Jesus, the Word is true. Jesus, is true. So you got to receive it. You got to that which I receive. Oh, glory to God. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I just pray that you receive it. He said, and, and then it went on, and he says, mm. he said, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. We know the bread represents his body. And he said, so let's take the bread together. So let's just pray. Father, We, I just thank you for the sacraments. I thank you, God, that you... You, you would just transform those, Lord, first and foremost in our spirit, in our mind, that we realize we're not just taking a piece of bread or a piece of cracker, but we acknowledge what you have done for us. So we're going to do this together now. So let's take the bread. He said they broke it because he was broken. His body was broken for us. 
as I alluded to earlier, it was, his mother couldn't recognize who he was. She knew who he was because she saw him put him up there, but he was so broken for us. So let us eat together. Praise God. And in the same way, not only was his body broken, but his blood was spilled out. When they beat him with that cat nine tail, ripped his flesh off his bones. But he would not give up the ghost until he accomplished the task. For that person, that person in, in India, that person in Africa, that person in China that didn't know him, that, that person in Philly, in America, that, that didn't, we, but we got the opportunity now. That's why we got to say, do what Pastor Carolyn said. We got to go out and share the good news. You don't have to die in your sins. And he said, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, he said, he, he blessed it, and he said, this is the, the, the new covenant in my blood. So let's drink in remembrance of what he's done for us. Let's drink together. Praise God. So just thank God for this opportunity. Every time, you know, it's just so powerful that every time it seems like it go deeper. I get I get a, a greater appreciation and a revelation. You know, because sometimes we can do stuff religiously and take it lightly. I, I didn't try to get all deep, but I just want to help you understand. This is we, this is not a game. We're not joking. We're not just playing. We're not just taking eating a piece of bread or cracker and, and some juice. No. We're acknowledging what our Father did for us through the Son. And the Son gave us His Spirit. And so with that understanding, as we're taking these, these sacraments, we begin to just continue to, to acknowledge He coming back for us. Hallelujah. We, we want to be ready. We're going to be ready. He's going to make us ready. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. That's what fathers do. Fathers make sure kids is ready. Yes. So He don't let us stay in our sin. He don't let us stay in our... He don't let us, no, 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 no. Whatever it takes, he, he'll do it. That's what he did. He sent his son to die on the cross to pay the price. Come on. No amount of gold, no amount of money, no amount of gas, no amount of nothing in the natural. I'm not trying to preach, but I just, the realization of this thing really starting to wake me up and say, hey, come on, we've done it so many times, so so many through my, 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 my spiritual life and growth, but every time I want it to be fresh and new. Because tomorrow's not promised to me. So I want to make sure I got a revelation and understanding of what I'm doing right here, right now. That's why I said take take inventory. Say take self inventory. Don't take this thing lightly, y'all. This ain't just something we do religiously. No, the devil is a liar. Amen. He is God. Yes. He is the Son of God. Yes. He is our Savior. Yes. He is our deliverer. Hallelujah. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. there is power, power, power wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb. there is power, power. have a joke for us. I have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Go, you. You told this to me yesterday. I'm not sure if, if we told this one before or not, but uh, there was a man, he was um, 80 years old, and he always had a desire to own a sports car. So, here we go. So, <laughs> I didn't even tell it yet. Don't be fooled with my joke. <laughs> so, he, he saves up all his money, takes his retirement money. He goes and he buys a Corvette. 
He pulls off the lot. He's doing 75 miles an hour. Yeah. Next thing you know, here comes the state trooper behind him. He takes it up to 80. Takes it up to 85, takes it up to 100, takes it up to 110. State troopers behind him with the lights on on a high-speed chase. Finally, he's like, what am I doing? And he pulls over. So the state trooper says, look, I get off in 30 minutes. If you can give me one good reason why I shouldn't give you a ticket, then I won't give you a ticket. And he said, well, 30 years ago, my wife left me for a state trooper, and I thought you were trying to bring her back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a goodie. Yeah. That's a goodie. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now we got to give it to her. Right. That's it. That's good. <laughs> I love it. Look, you, look. You, 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 you muted yourself. You muted yourself. You muted yourself. Wait, you got a salute from Tony. He said, whoa. Yes. Yes. Give me some credit. Yes, you showed it to me. No, no, no. He said, give me some birthday credit. Come on, give me some credit. Council, council. Yes, it is. That was good. Tammy said it was good, too. All right. Just get two thumbs up, though, on that one. I love it. I thought you tried to bring it back. I don't want it. No. Oh. Mom, you so cute when you tell the joke to you, like, you went 80? Yeah. <laughs> Gordy? Yes? Time to get in the car. Let's go. All right. We're going to get some crabs, y'all. Love everybody. All right. Hey, I got two quick ones. Two quick All ones. Right. Two quick ones. All right. Real fast. Real fast. It's your All birthday, right. Apostle. It's your birthday. Extra jokes. This is for you ladies. Uh -oh. I, heard, I heard about this lady that was shopping with her husband. He asked her not to buy any new clothes. Well, she saw this dress in the window and decided to try it on. She liked it so much, she bought it in secret. A couple of days later, the husband discovered it, and he was so upset, and she explained to him that when she tried it on, it looked so good that Satan tempted her to buy it, and she just couldn't resist it. He said, why didn't you do what the scripture says and say, get behind me, Satan? She said, I did. And he told me it looked even better from a distance. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I thought he was going to push her into the dress. <laughs> All right, here's I'm the second one. Here's the second one. I heard about these three pastors that were in a boat fishing together one day. One of them said, we never get a chance to let our hair down. Let's each tell the, air, the, the area that we struggle the most and we can pray for each other. Mm. The first one said, I hate to admit this, but I have a problem with gambling, drinking. I sneak out a lot at night and go gambling and drinking. The second one said, I have a problem with cheating. I hardly ever pay any taxes and people that I owe. The third one just sat there silently. They waited and waited and waited, but he wouldn't wouldn't budge. They said, we are not leaving until you tell us yours. He said, all right, my greatest sin is with gossiping, and I can't wait to get off this boat. <laughs> That's a little Larry, because he's going to tell us all. <laughs> Oh, no. Y'all <laughs> okay. better watch what y'all say around little Larry. <laughs> we need to start talking. Go tell it. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all in the morning. No, all, right. all right. Love y'all. Right. Love, love you. Happy birthday, Dad. Nice. Enjoy fun. those crabs. All right. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know you will. Oh, got that. I, I envy y'all. I'll enjoy some shrimp. Hi, Mom. I envy y'all.